Hi, my name is Thomas Maurer. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft, and I'm sitting here with Jane from the Azure management team to talk about hybrid server management. Yeah, hi, I'm a program manager in Azure. Hi, so uh, I speak a lot with customers uh, which are using the cloud for their compute resources. Uh, but most of them, or a lot of them, also have servers running in their private data centers, in their branch offices, or they even have other parts in the organization which they use another cloud provider or another service providers. And one of the main challenges with all these servers they have is basically keeping control of all these servers wherever they are running uh, to make sure that they are secure, that they're patched, that they have the compliance. Um, and I heard that the Azure team, and especially you, are working on something which helps with that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I love to talk about it. And as actually echoing what you just mentioned, it is indeed a huge challenge. Um, and so I talk to a lot of customers as well, um, especially they need to manage these uh, very uh, to, like hybrid environment server all over the place uh, with application team trying to just go out, get all the resource they need to. It doesn't matter which cloud, they just go in and, and deploy things there. Um, and the IT on the other hand is trying to understand, oh my gosh, where are all the things? Where are all the data? Uh, what happens if something got breached, and especially now you see the news all over the place. Um, so this is really something Azure has always been um, thinking about, and especially services today that already thinking of uh, managing on-prem servers, but now with this service, we're really taking it to the next step to integrate those servers more natively into Azure. Okay, that sounds fantastic. So when you talk about integrating these servers into Azure, what do you mean by that? Yeah, I'd love to show you a picture of oh, it. Perfect, thank you. Here is how services are managing this um, environment. So th these services actually all manage on-prem servers today. Uh, by the way, I'm calling it on-prem server, but it really doesn't matter where they are. They can be on-prem in data centers, private data centers, or in other hosted cloud. Uh, but as you can see, all these services managing the Azure Virtual Machines through the something called Azure Resource Manager, short for ARM. And um, where on the on-prem servers, they really need to figure out a way to get their code deployed onto those on-prem servers um, individually. So as you can see, there is some disparity between the two panel. And this is really what we I mean by natively integrated into ARM. Now they get projected as an ARM resource into Azure. The benefit will be huge. As you can see, a lot of investment went into ARM, like identity, like RBAC, like policies. Most importantly, a lot of customers really care about compliance and also just regular management, like tag them, show what are my service are all in production. Those kind of simple things are all capable um, through ARM. So now I have once project these servers into ARM, I get all this benefit. In addition, all the services now can be deployed onto Azure as well as on-prem in the same fashion. So as you can see here, I labeled out a very important component called guest agent. The purpose of this agent is to manage the life cycle of these extensions. And we're following the same model so that now all these extensions can be applied to on-prem servers as well. So that's great. So our servers show up as Azure resources. They show up in the portal and also in the Azure Resource Manager, and I can basically treat them as like machines, like I used to do with Azure Virtual Machines, right? Um, yes, from a management perspective, that is our central goal. We wanted to all these solutions to manage these servers the same way uh, for Azure as well as for on-prem, and also they apply for the same uh, through the they get the same ARM benefit. Okay, that's awesome. So um, I want to now use that. So can you show me how we onboard these servers to Azure? Absolutely, let me show you a demo. This is a page that we built to show all the on-prem servers that uh, has been onboarded to Azure. Essentially to onboard, the customer need to run a script on the server um, and to help to build that script, we actually build a flow in Azure to generate that script. This is so. This is the option that they can uh, click to generate the script. But at the same time, we also recognize it's a challenge for customers to onboard at scale if they have to connect to every single server individually to run these scripts. So we're also trying to understand what are some common 
on-prem server management applications that we can integrate uh, to help customers to onboard those machines at scale. For example, here, if the server is already managed by the um, Azure Update Service, uh, we build actually um, the script or the runbooks to actually deploy to onboard those uh, machines um, onto Azure without actually customers touching all those machines. Uh, but in the future, we're also working with, for example, System Center Configuration Manager, and they also integrating the onboarding experience. And in addition to Windows Admin Center, so we just kind of keep on expanding on how customers can onboard to Azure in a, a least effort way. Uh, but in this case, let me show you how to generate the script. Um, so as you can see, these are Azure resources. So they follow the same hierarchy as in subscriptions and resource group. So now you can pick which uh, subscription and resource group they belong, they wanted to go. And here the region indicate that which Azure region is running these service managing these on-prem resources. Um, so you can see from a, like a compliance or regulatory po uh, point perspective, you know where the metadata is stored in Azure. Physical location is new, specifically for the on-prem servers. This allows customer to tag the servers or um, specifically indicate which data center they are in. Uh, so if there's something, this is really about ease of management. Okay, that's pretty cool. So customers could not just add a date name of their data center. So they could even, like for example, also add a room of the location or even the rack name or the rack number uh, for their server. Yeah, absolutely. So this is really for the customer to easily identify where that resource is. If something happens to that server, they can go. If they need to physically access, they know exactly where they need to be. Here, we also uh, allow customer to choose the operating systems. As I didn't really specifically spell it out, but uh, as always in Azure, we are trying to embrace Windows as well as Linux. Same for here that um, we build two packages um, for agents to onboard either Windows Server or Linux Server. I understand a lot of customers for on-prem especially, they want to, they don't want to expose their servers to the internet directly and they put it behind a proxy server. Uh, so here, in this case, our agent does need to connect to the Azure service. Um, so if the customer need to, um, are the, if these servers are not in um, connect to the Azure directly, they can configure the proxy server here um, and then the agent will be able to uh, communicate through the proxy server. This is just a real, uh, uh, Azure resource um, uh, capability, so they can tag the servers to indicate uh, maybe who owns them uh, or whether they are a part of a team. Yeah, so this also means this is like with other Azure resources, right? So for example, in my environment, I tag resources based on production, development environment, uh, demo environments, and so on. So they can use the same tagging uh, for their basically on-prem servers. Yeah, right? exactly. You got that. And in the end here, um, we generate the script. Uh, so now you can take a copy of the script and run it on the target server. Uh, let me show you exactly the script uh, content. So the first is really three steps. Uh, once you download the package, uh, but if you actually uh, already downloaded and put it on a file share, you can just change that to copy it off from the file share. And the second uh, command is to install that package. The last one is the important one here to which will actually doing the onboarding, this tool will actually create the ARM resource and then link back to the agent so that at the end of the onboarding process, you will actually show, see these resource pre presenting that physical server in the Azure portal. Oh, that's awesome. So we make it super easy basically for customers to onboard these servers by basically creating them the script they need. And obviously, I think they can also run these scripts against multiples of servers if they onboard like not just one or two servers, but maybe hundreds of servers. Oh, right? yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's great. So now I have my server in the portal and I can see that and manage it using the Azure Resource Manager. Which services can I actually use now? Yeah, let me show you that. Um, so if you click on one of the resource, as you can see here, we really want to uh, follow the Azure virtual machine model. So you can see the list of capabilities and uh, it's eventually, as we go move forward, uh, we are going to expand on these man management capabilities. Today, we are enabling two uh, specific uh, services. One is we can integrate it with log analytics so that uh, you can actually get the logs added to the resource ID and you can query those logs in one central place. So let me show you. If I click on logs, I will be able to get all the 
logs relevant to this server. Without this, what if customer trying to access a log from a for a server, they essentially need to go to the server, figure out which workspace ID it connects to, and then come to the portal, find that workspace, and then you can filter based on the computer name. Now with this integration, you can simply just click here and then get all the logs belong to the same server. Oh, that's fantastic. So this also helps me, like, uh, I see a lot of customers having like different organization parts, and some of them are just really application focused. So I cannot just give access to this specific team to a specific set of servers, and they can just access the logs uh, from for these servers. Yeah, that's actually a great benefit you that mentioned there is uh, in March, the monitoring team has released this new capability called a resource-centric um, RBAC role, uh, access for the logs, and um, they made it available for Azure VMs. Now with the hybrid service, now they can you can also get it for on-prem servers. Oh, that's awesome. So you also mentioned policies. Yeah. So Azure policy is um, the place where customers can define their compliance and can also view their compliance status. There's this particular category of policies called guest configuration policies. You can think of guest configuration policies almost like group policies, but for servers not domain joined. Yep. <laughs> and um, so there is a lot, a long list. We list of the guest configuration policies. We made um, 18 built-in policies today. Uh, so you can actually deploy them um, right out of the box. Uh, but also there is a, if you have a requirement that um, not built in, you can actually create those custom policies and deploy them into unique environment. With the guest configuration policies, it actually works through ARM um, for the Azure VMs. Now with the hybrid, they can also be um, monitoring and um, governing the on-prem servers. So as you can see, I deployed some of the guest configuration policies. And in one view, I can see all these non-compliant uh, status. And if I drill down to, I notice I um, the password policy, I have a bunch of non-compliant services. So let me come here, drill down, then I can see all the servers that not in compliant. Let's see. If you can see which resource group they belong to, so you can get an idea what they are doing. But also here, importantly, is that they cover these are Azure virtual machines and these are on-prem servers. So in one view, you get a full picture of all the service that not in compliant. Wow, that's fantastic. So I see all my servers doesn't matter where they're running, if they're running in Azure, if they're running on-prem, in my data centers, in my branch offices, I can see them with one single um, view and I can manage them from, from Azure. Yeah, that's our purpose is having Azure to be the one central place and we want to provide the consistent experience. Um, so that's fantastic. So if I'm a customer today, how do I get my hands on this? Yeah, so we are really uh, getting the public preview now. So if you follow the link on the screen, you will be able to see our documentation and the process on how to uh, enroll with the service. OK, that's fantastic. And what about the cost for this? Oh, yeah, that's a great point. Uh, get a lot of questions on how much would I pay for it. And the good news or great news is it's free. Um, that means that you don't actually pay to onboard your machines onto Azure, uh, and you only will pay for the solutions that you're going to deploy onto those servers. Oh, that's fantastic news. Uh, so thank you very much, Jane. Thank you for being here and showing us this hybrid management capabilities. Yeah, thank you.